Welcome to this week's Eccentric Minute, brought to you by Eccentric. Our first exercise here in the Eccentric Minute is the K-Box Squat. This is the granddaddy of all of them, guys. One that we use at all levels of our training with a vast array of athletes. A couple big tips. I like to use a something for our hands to support it. Make sure that strap is completely taut to the top. Don't leave it short. Don't leave it long. What I really like the most about it, guys, the iso-inertial wheel, we're going to use this with other squats as well. The other squats are working to depth. These, we're going to get to an athletic position and work our way up. Push hard and make sure you're fighting to hit that breaking force. As we cut reps, we usually cut depth as well to make it a little bit more transferable to what we do. This is an awesome exercise that I can't recommend enough. Throw it in your training. It's going to be great for you and your athlete. I really hope you enjoyed this week's Eccentric Minute. Make sure you check them out at eccentric.com to find out everything you need about the K-Box and the K-Pulley. Before we get to the show, let's play a little game of name association. When I say the names Hank Krasenhoff, Dr. Natalia Verkashensky, Brett Bartholomew, Dr. Charlie Weingroff, Dr. Brian Mann, and Dr. Fergus Connolly, what do you think? Well, if the answer to that was they each have multiple lectures in the Strength Coach Network, then you would be right. On top of these sensational lectures from these six world leaders, we have well over 100 additional lectures from some of the top practitioners in the world, along with an extremely active forum where there's coaches from all over the world discussing everything in the strength and conditioning world. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPs that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S to dive into all that great content today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today, guys, I have an absolutely killer talk. I get the opportunity to sit down and talk about building a staff and relationships in a new position with Mississippi State University's Director of Olympic Sports Strength and Conditioning, Stephanie Mock. After a real quick intro of how she got down to Mississippi State, Stephanie's going to open right up and talk about what they've been building down there, both literally and figuratively, when it's talking about building the new weight room as staff and this new sports science aspect to their department that they really started from ground zero. This leads her right into sharing with us how she, you know, had to onboard herself when it came to the two teams that she gets to work with and how building relationships right off the bat with the coaching staff was a real key to that. She then shares with us, you know, the onboarding process when it comes to staff and what she's looking to fill and, and how she's looking to develop and move her staff forward. She finishes off sharing with us, you know, changing the mindset of how that she's looking at things and observing things and communicating from herself to her staff and the sport coaches and how moving everything from the framework of how we typically look at it to an observation has really had a positive impact on her as a manager and a coach. This is really an awesome talk, guys. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Let's get right to it. Stephanie, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. No, Jay, thank you so much for having me on. I'm extremely excited to chat with you for a little while and get to know one another that much more. Yeah, I'm really excited for this because, unfortunately, you weren't able to be with us this July, but you've been the four years prior, three years prior? Um, at least four, for sure, since yeah. I was an intern back at West Virginia. Oh, yeah, back up with <laughs> yeah. Beth. And, uh, yeah, with Beth. So, yeah, it might even be six, so definitely were missed. <laughs> But it's because there's been some pretty awesome changes for you career-wise. So let's let everybody where it know where Coach Mock is and what she's been up to and, and what you got cooking down there. Yeah, well, now I am the Director of Olympic Sports Strength and Conditioning here at Mississippi State. And I may not have been able to make it in person up to the conference, but luckily, Jay, I think it's pretty awesome that you live stream it and I could bring the conference to my weight room and it allowed not only myself to benefit, but my interns got to chime in and um, whether they're paid, unpaid, GAs, assistants, I think it was a great staff building experience too. Cause when speakers would happen, we have a little bit of time in between. We'd all talk about what we thought about the speakers. And I think 
other conferences should really try and live stream it similar to you because it, it's a great piece to have in-house um, and a, a great way to get there. Being in Mississippi, sometimes it's hard to get to Virginia with the crazy things that come up in athletics, but I think that's a, a great asset you have with your conference. Well, I'm super excited that you guys were able to take advantage of it, and I think it's something that is starting to grow, and I think that it's something that more and more staffs are starting to see that there are some some ways that they can make it an in-house and help each other. Um, I mean, obviously, we'd, we would have rather you been here. For sure. Um, but I'm glad that that worked out. But being down there now in a director role, this is new. The, the role is new. And there have been some, some new challenges for you that I think a lot of us go through multiple times through our careers. So let's talk about this transition. Let's talk about what literally and figuratively you're building down there. So yeah, Jay, I came from, a, I was at Clemson University under Rick Flansblau and, and Dennis Love. And whenever I got there in 2013, we were just really starting to as an intern back then. But D Love and Rick were really working on building out the staff and getting technology integrated with all the different sports. And I was there for five years and I saw it from the the ground level and we really built things up to Rick adding all sorts of different pieces of technology, whether it's like 1080 Sprint, um, all the heart rate system, Northport, Groin Bar, et cetera. But uh, I went from that to coming here in Mississippi State and you go from having all these different assets of technology in particular to coming here and not saying it was a bad situation by any means, you know, there's all different types of ways to skin the cat, but I think I got here and I was like, all right, now what? And luckily I was able to bring whenever I got this position, they gave me a position to hire an assistant spot. And um, I did bring my one assistant, Aaron Duval with me. He was at Texas uh, as a sports scientist under Travis Fuentes. Um, so went from Clemson to Texas and then he came here with me and my thoughts with that position with hiring him, he could be a dual threat piece of sports scientist slash strength coach since they didn't have that here in Mississippi state. Um, and so I brought him with me and then there were multiple Olympic weight rooms and I really wanted to put it on the forefront of centralizing the program and getting it all into one space, especially me being brand new and bringing new people with me. I wanted everybody into one space and really work on um, everyone speaking the same language and working off of the same playbook and just really developing relationships because being brand new, you have to get to know, and especially the director role, all the head sport coaches, assistant coaches, the the people that I inherited, um, whether it's my graduate assistants and things like that. So getting us all in one space really allowed me to get to know everyone and get them to understand what my mission and goal was with the program and why I came to Mississippi state and took this position. I love that because someone too, that's as forward thinking and education oriented as you are to have that many minds in one room must really drive the entire staff forward. Yeah. I really focus on like being in a leadership role. It's my job to lead and show them what my vision is for the program. So I really aimed with that being all right, like this is where I want to get to. And I think sometimes people take for granted whenever you're in one place and not in like five different weight rooms, let's say, on one campus, like the FaceTime that you get, whether it's walking past one another, it's like, hey, I just thought of this. What do you think of that? Um, I think it's a great asset to have having everybody in that one place, especially when everything is so new, you know? Oh, yeah. New for everybody because there's people with a new supervisor and then there's the supervisor in a new location so let's talk about how you've built this what are you trying to get across to these younger coaches what are you trying to instill in these younger coaches and where have you had some success with them kind of you know getting on the mock train and understanding this is how it's going to be and this is how we're going to do things (laughs) I like that getting on the mock train. Um, So my big thing is whenever hiring different positions and I've really grown the staff out, like I've added two paid intern positions, I've added an assistant position. um, And with that, whenever I was hiring the positions, it wasn't just about like who is the best candidate on paper. Um, It's really just who the best fit is. 
So whether it's personality, um, whether it's talents they bring to the table, for me, it's really just the best fit in that regard. So keeping that in mind, um, just me creating a well-rounded machine of, hey, I know you're really good at these different things. I'm going to give you what your strengths are and run with it. You know, and that's my job as a director is hiring people that aren't all Stephanie Mox. I need different pieces to the puzzle. I'm extremely extroverted, so I probably don't need five other, five other people on staff that are extremely extroverted, right? I need different pieces that will complete my puzzle as a director. I love that. So then how are you then identifying where are these pieces to the puzzle you need to fill? And then how are you identifying the people that are best going to fill those pieces to the puzzle? Yeah. So what I look at is depending on the level of position, of course, I'm looking for a diverse staff. So I look at, like I said earlier, personality, strengths, and expertise. Um, and I base it off, off of myself. So I know I'm good at, let's say, being the voice on the floor, organizing, um, the staff. And then also I really look at projectability. So bringing somebody in, especially my paid interns, I'm like, okay, I can't expect everybody to stay the whole entire time here at Mississippi state for the rest of their career. So whenever I bring in, whether it's a graduate assistant and paid intern, I'm looking at, Hey, down the road, I may need to hire them back as an assistant, you know? So I look at the projectability piece and even bringing my assistant Aaron on, I knew, okay, this is his first truly full-time role. I know I'm going to be able to get, let's say three or four years out of them. Um, so he can really help me build this thing up. It's not like he's coming here for a year and then hopping to the next spot. Like he's here for the long haul. Hey, let's build this thing up, whether it's getting all the new racks in, all the equipment, all the different pieces of technology, teaching everybody about it. Um, but really looking at best fit from a standpoint of who complements myself and the current staff at Mississippi State. I love that. But there's also this other thing trick that you had to do while you're building all that you're still coaching <laughs> this is true <laughs> so it's like you're sitting here and you're talking about all these things like we had to build a weight room which i'm in the middle of right now and there's days where i want to stab myself in the eye with a pencil you're yeah. running all the administrative work you're hiring a staff you've built you've added four positions if i counted right yeah yeah and, yeah. and you have how many teams i have two okay so that's good so let's it's not that about, many <laughs> well but this also, so you just had to come in and get an entire staff on board, onboard these people, get them working with you, get them building around your mission. Oh, and then you had two teams that you just took over for as well. Let's talk about that transition in and of itself. How was that walking in? How was this for you to build that side of the position? And then I want to get more into the actual training stuff after. Yeah. So when I came in, I mean, I just hit the ground running. Like my first week here, I reached out to all the head sport coaches, set up meetings, uh, try to get an understanding of what they're trying to accomplish and a standpoint of more just what, from a training aspect, what they liked from before, what they didn't like before. And then also I always aim to use the same ver verbiage in the weight room as with the sport coaches use with the athletes with their actual culture piece. So and then also I talked to them about, okay, what do you look for in your strength coach, expectations, um, training style, this, that, and the other. So when I'm bringing in people and hiring them, I'm assigning the right fit. So I'm alleviating headaches down the road of, oh, I put somebody that's extremely introverted with, with let's say, the tennis is, but both tennis coaches like someone that's extremely extroverted. You know, so it's my job to go talk with the head sport coaches, get an understanding of what they want and – plug and play from there, you know, which is easier said than done. That's for sure. But you always want to give the best product to them and create successful environments for everybody, you know, cause you don't want people getting burned out in the sense of, Oh man, I really don't feel like I fit this role in the manner of what they were looking for. So I really try to get a, a really good understanding of what they've had prior to me arriving as a director and then what they would like improved going forward. And I think that's the biggest thing every year. I mean, I've been here for one year now um, going into my second year is every year I'm going to all the head sport coaches and asking them, what can we do better? You know, what can we improve upon? It's never going to stop. So, and that's one thing that I really enjoy. Like we being in one weight room, it brings all the head sport coaches into one space watching lifts. 
And it's really cool to see different coaches that may not see one another because their offices are on different parts of campus, let's say, um, getting the chance to talk and communicate. And it's nice to have that all in one space. And my big piece that I stress to whether it's my paid interns, unpaid or GAs is I want everybody helping out with all the groups when they can. Of course, if they're running a group, they can't be somewhere else. They can't be two places at one time. But I really want all of especially my younger staff members to get around all the different teams, whether it's a a field sport, court sport, et cetera, so they can become well-rounded. Because I think a lot of the time nowadays, people are getting pigeonholed really, really early. And it's it's limiting them as a strength coach, you know, being around soccer is going to help you from a, a bio and a bioenergetic standpoint and being around a, a softball, baseball from a rotational sport aspect, that's going to help. But really just, it, it kills me whenever I talk to a young strength coach and they're like, Oh, I really want to be, um, quote unquote, some guy, like a football guy, basketball guy, baseball guy, et cetera. Like, how do you know that when you're in your first year as an intern, um, just a quote unquote guy. You just want to be a practitioner, you know, a thousand percent. When I got <laughs> here, if you would have told me, well, you're going to be a basketball guy. I would have told me you're going to be the guy to get out of my face. You don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Exactly. Cause we're all young and dumb at some point, And we all think we're going to be something crazy that we're not until the opportunity that you didn't want falls in your lap. And you think, well, let's see. Yeah, no, for sure. I think if I wouldn't have been around, like whenever I was at Clemson, Rick really preached to us about centralizing a program and everyone getting involved with all the teams. So it allowed me to understand, like I knew as a director, you have to speak the language of all of the coaches because if they come to you and they're like, man, I really don't like so-and-so's training um, with whether it's golf, tennis, softball, volleyball. Like if you haven't worked with all these teams or been around all these teams, how are you going to be able to defend whatever training or speak whatever language or understand that sport in any way, shape or form. So I think, especially if you want to be in a director role, you have to understand all sports on a technical tactical piece, you know? Totally. Although it would probably be odd for you if the softball and volleyball coach came to you and said they didn't like their training. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, I'm always trying to get better. So if there's something they don't like, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out and let's keep it moving. Let's get better, you know? So I'm extremely open-minded. You just better have a good reason why they don't like it. (laughs) Yeah, no. But, you know, and then going back to what you said, I mean, like you obviously, I mean, well, for people who don't know, you do have a volleyball background. This is true. So that's that's a home run for you. But then why softball? Why did you pick softball to add in on top of the, I mean, it's a Wegmans list for me right now of other responsibilities you have right now. Why was that the second sport you chose to add? And how is that helping you be better with a sport that has been so important to you for so long? Yeah. You know, I'm someone that I really enjoy challenging myself. So I like to make myself uncomfortable of learning other sports that I may not have played, you know, which volleyball comes second nature because I played it in college at West Virginia. So I'm like, all right, I've been around this for however many years. So this comes to me naturally. And you get some street cred when you played volleyball at a high level, you know. So um, that sport, of course, I love. That's why I played it for so long. Um, But softball, really, when I came on my interview, like myself and the softball coach hit it off so well. And she's like, if you're not my strength coach, I'm going to be really upset. (laughs) So, um, I think in that regard, I was like, man, we could be a a storm, you know, we could really take things over. And I mean, you want to have a great relationship with your sport coaches and that's how you're going to be successful, you know, and you can speak openly and it's okay to, I don't want to say have an argument, but may not agree on something, but be able to defend it in some way, shape or form. And I knew with her, Uh, we had a a great relationship off the bat and I was like, why not work with this coach? Cause I feel like we could be a force to be reckoned with in that regard. And I was getting ready actually at Clemson. Um, we had been adding softball as I was heading out the door. So I helped with the recruiting process of all the new student athletes. And I really enjoyed working with baseball and softball. I mean, there's even more action with the field being smaller and everything else. So I was like, this is a sport that I really would like to work with. And I had been around, Mostly all the other sports, I had never worked with softball. I interned with them at Pitt way back when, but uh, 
it seemed like a sport that I would really enjoy. And one thing I aim for here is I want the full-time staff to have a sport in season in the fall and then in season in the spring, not have two sports in season at one time. Um, so you have the ability to travel a little bit with the team and get to know them that much more. So with having volleyball in season in the fall, it seemed like softball being in season in the spring would be perfect. That's awesome. And another little known fact is that was the first team I ever worked with at SUNY Cortland was our, our softball team. That's awesome. Yeah. No, they're a fun team. Yeah. It's, uh, (laughs) it's, I mean, all of the sports subcultures are unique in their own, but softball is definitely a unique one. Yeah. No, it's great to be around a, a group of females that just love to train, you know, and get after it. So it's it's very in, enjoyable to work with them. They they drive you some days, you know, get you going. So. No doubt. So now let's let's talk about the training aspect of it because the, the similarities and the differences between those two sports are, are really like there are some exceptionally major similarities and some exceptionally massive differences. So how is the balancing with the training process between those two? How are there some, some connections? How are there some things that you've taken from your time as a volleyball player and coaching them to help through your eyes and through your lens that you look at it as training help communicate with a newer coach some ideas that they may or may not have been accustomed to. For sure. I mean, just overall, like I would say from a program standpoint, some of the different pieces that I brought in um, that was so different for both of the head coaches was just the different pieces of technology. So like whether it's the polar heart rate monitors and like learning what training load really is, you know, and some of the the diagnostic testing of the nord bork bar, like the contact grid, um, just teaching them what these different pieces of technology are, even like the gym aware, having velocity-based training as an asset that you can use. uh, They had just never been exposed to it. So that was um, definitely eye-opening for them and teaching them like some of these different pieces that we can use for our training, whether it's to like individualize them in like a a speed or a strength group with velocity based training. And I think it's awesome to work with sport coaches that have open minds of, I want to learn this stuff and I want to learn how I can make my student athletes better from it. And they're not like, well, we never used this before. I'm going to completely shut it off. So I think in that regard of adding those different things, it was awesome for them to be so accepting of it. Um, Because some sport coaches, they could not be, you know, and I think from a a volleyball standpoint, like talking with those players, them knowing when I played volleyball at the the collegiate level, and then also I've worked with them at other universities prior to them, but the student athlete just understanding that you understand their sport and being able to speak the language with them and then being able to talk to them about conference play, um, tournament play, and Like, for example, whenever we're playing tournaments um, and you're playing two games in one day, you know, or three games in a weekend, like understanding, hey, all right, our volume is extremely high over the weekend, so we're not going to have high volume in the weight room. You know, intensity is still going to be high in that regard, but the high volume, high volume aspect is probably not going to work out for you. So being able to speak to them about that um, and just being mindful of it. And then with softball, I mean – both volleyball and softball are, you have power athletes, right? And with softball, um, you really start with, you're building a speed and power athlete and you need a strong aerobic foundation because with softball, you do play a lot of games in a short period of time. So they need a certain level of aerobic fitness to aid in their recovery, which with volleyball, especially during tournament play, you run into the same thing. Um, but with softball, we definitely lift extremely heavy because you always have to remember they need a certain amount of body mass and strength because they are swinging an implement that weighs a certain amount. So understanding that, and I mean, with softball going a little bit deeper, uh, we really focus on that general strength in the fall, um, whether it's squat, deadlift, different lunging patterns. Uh, I do wish, um, flip side of that, volleyball, we really don't have that much time going into 
the fall season to get ready. You know, you only have three or four weeks in the summer to prepare them rather than softball. You have a whole entire semester to really work on getting strong and um, getting a little bit more plane specific, whether it's rotational work, uh, frontal and transverse or transverse plane, uh, some of the med ball work that I do and using the Kaiser machines for chops and et cetera. And I really have some time to break down the speed work and acceleration patterns and even throwing in some curve running because running bases. But I wish I had the same amount of time that I do with softball as volleyball leading up to season, but beggars can't be choosers with the school year and things like that. So, no, and I, you know, I used to say the same thing when I was working <laughs> with field hockey. It's, I just, ugh, I think I actually have done this rant as my thoughts Monday, but the whole idea of the non competitive season, I think, is backwards for a lot of these teams. And I think that, like, a team like volleyball and field hockey and soccer shouldn't play in the spring and they should be around for eight weeks in the summer. I mean, volleyball is a little different because they're inside, but like, yeah, like with field hockey, we're bringing women from Europe or Pennsylvania to Richmond, Virginia to tell them to run around on AstroTurf that they water. We can talk about that another time too. <laughs> um, and it's 105 degrees and humid already. Like these poor women are running around out there and it's like, a hot day in middle Pennsylvania is like 85. They're struggling because it's it's a 25% increase just in temperature. For sure. Uh, but whatever. Imagine how hot it is in Mississippi. Yeah, hard pass. <laughs> I mean, it, hard pass is right. It's too, hot. I bet, and it's humid too. Yes, yes. I thought South Carolina was hot, and then I got here, and I was like, Wow. <laughs> This is some heat in Mississippi. I feel bad for people who have to come play here, but then we do have to go to LSU, Alabama, everybody else. So it's just, it's hot everywhere, to say the least. I bet. But it's good softball too, though. True. Very good softball. Very competitive. So then uh, let's, let's get this one to be the last one, and then I want to definitely make sure we talk about the content you guys put out to close, because you guys are doing awesome with that. You're... 13 months in, right? Yeah. You can take yourself back 13 months from now. What is the one piece of information that Stephanie gives herself to prepare her for this step? What is one thing that you looked at and you said, man, if I could only do that one more time, or man, if I could have looked at it this way, we could have been a little better. Or you know what? You're going to come up to this. And you're going to think it's wrong. Trust your gut. You're doing the right thing. Yeah, I think me being able to understand that I work at a very fast pace. And I have to understand sometimes that other people aren't working as fast as I am. Right. So I think it's more not so much within my staff because they know what they're getting with me. But um just being in the state of Mississippi, sometimes things can be a little bit slower. <laughs> so in regards to like, I'm a go, go, go type of person, get it done now. Um, I have to be understanding that other people have a lot of things on their plate. So I think I am an extremely fast paced person in making sure that I'm understanding of other people, uh, if that makes sense. And uh, I think that framing everything as an observation has been really beneficial to me and whether it's I'm going into a meeting and talking about like different pieces of technology, you know, with a sport coach and it's like, hey, rather than going in and telling them like, wow, practice yesterday, you literally killed them. Their time over 90% was this, their training load was this, like, let's say a volleyball example, a five set match is the, the largest or the, the biggest game that you're ever going to play. But like, Yesterday's practice was a 10 set match from a training load standpoint, um, never going in and insulting or a coach's ego, uh, going in and framing everything as an observation and having a, a way of improvement beyond that. Because as strength coaches, uh, we don't have all the answers, right? But I'd rather assess than assume. So I think adding in all these different pieces of technology here at Mississippi State and, and working to get everybody on board, it's been really beneficial for me to, to frame it as an observation to everyone because you never want to tell any sport coach what to do. Um, but I think just 
getting to know all the different people, um, whether it's on an administrative standpoint, um, team oversight, things like that. Um, it's been really beneficial to link up communication channels and things like that. And I think one of the hardest things when you come to a new university is just like creating that understanding of who's in charge of what and who's doing what roles and responsibilities has been crazy. But I don't, I'm not someone to say like, I go back, I'd like to change this, this, and this. Like, I think it's been a great last year and I've grown so much this past year um, in my career, just being a director. And I, I'm just very thankful that I got to bring two of my old interns from Clemson now, um, Aaron and then my other assistant, Trey. Um, they've been extremely beneficial. If I didn't have them, I don't even know what I would do um, in that regard because the biggest thing is I can trust them and I know they always have my back. And I think people don't realize how big trust is anymore. Oh, Sorry to go off on a soapbox. No, but, but it's, but it's yeah. non-existent, dude. It's, uh, it's completely <laughs> non-existent. It's petrifying how non-existent it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think having those two um, has helped me of like, if I have to go to a meeting, and I have to stay late and I need a team covered. Like I know they have my back no matter what. And if they have to stay three extra hours to help me out, they're going to do it. And you can't find people like that nowadays. So I think that's just my number one thing is trust within my staff and hiring the right people and say, like, if I have to hire someone and I know I can trust them and their skill set skill set may be not as developed as somebody else that may not be as trustworthy and their skill set is really high, I'm still going to go with the person I can trust no matter what um, over skill set being extremely high because you just want to have the right people in your corner that you can always lean on. They're going to help you be successful at the end of the day. I love that. Uh, all of that is sensational. <laughs> and I, you know, the observational stuff with communication is something that I think all too often we as a overall vocation don't do well when it comes to communicating those things where training load may be high or players may be tired or whatever. We kind of get a bit uh, ornery might be the word. Mm -hmm. um, and to hear it put that way is, is pretty awesome. I love that. But let me get you out of here on this, Stephanie, because you guys also put out some really good content and you share everything that you're doing. Um, <laughs> where can they find more? Where can they see what you guys are doing? Where can they learn alongside with you guys? Because, I, I mean, shoot, it seems like every other week the, the uh, Instagram accounts got you guys at some other symposium or talking with somebody else or in service with this group or that group. Uh, where can they learn what you're doing with your staff and your athletes? Yeah, I mean, one thing that we aim to do, like we set staff goals, is reach out to at least one professional a month in the field. Uh, and I think that's just one way of, one, staying in touch with all of our different coaching trees because we all come from different places. So it's like, all right, I just hired a paid intern. His name's Billy Cedar. He got his master's at WVU um, and he's at Michigan before that. Like that's two different coaching trees that we can reach out to different professionals and, and talk with them. And I don't like using the, the term top shop, but like even with you putting out different podcasts, Jay, like we can, like we talked with John Waggle and he was on your podcast. I don't even know when a hot minute ago and he was at ETSU. Like, We'll do a bunch of research before we call somebody, and and that's just one way of to continue education. You know, keep things fresh in your space because, I mean, you're around one another. Let's say all fall, it's a grind, right? But being able to reach out to somebody in the field once a month keeps things fresh and new, and keep new ideas and keep on brainstorming. You know, because my big thing is you need to continue to educate yourself every single day, um, and there's no reason why you can't anymore, especially nowadays with podcasts being out there, free eBooks. Like education is everywhere. It's just up to you to reach out and grab it. So one of my big core values within my staff is just reading every day or like watching a video or listening to a podcast because it's extremely competitive in the field. And if you're not improving every day, you're you're going downhill. So um, that's why I put continue education first. And I mean, I learned that from Rick Franz while I was at Clemson. Like he was constantly grinding and grinding and grinding and finding different ways to get better. So it's it's really in my blood to a certain degree. And I think 
it's my duty and job. Whenever you have, let's say, unpaid interns, you need to pay them in some way, shape or form. So I need to pay them in education. You know, that's my job as a director is not only to lead, but to educate. Um, and of course, that goes back to just educating myself and constantly learning and never becoming stagnant. So that's why you see us doing all these different things, because I just want to keep everybody motivated and going forward because burnout is so high in our field. You know, it's not many people that you see retire in strength and conditioning. Right. So I think and even going off of that, another tangent, but uh, being able to go out and meet people and that's how you create job opportunities for whether it's my paid interns or unpaid interns or GAs. Like if I'm not sending them places for continued education or giving them opportunities to meet people, it's my job after this to get them a job <laughs> to stay in the field. So off of that, I mean, that's how Anthony Paroli used to be our, our head football strength coach. And he's the one that had reached out to me about this position and I had met him at Central Virginia. So shout out to you, Jay, um, making and creating these relationships that help get you opportunities down the road um, as long as you're doing your due diligence and uh, continue to educate yourself and make yourself the best candidate for the spot. So really big on investing in yourself. You know, you need to. It'll pay off later on down the road. Yeah. Whether it's investing in books and reading research and everything else. So. No, nah, no doubt. And I'm really glad that all those trips up here from South Carolina paid off. And Anthony's a, <laughs> he's a heck of a dude. and He's going to do great in the league now. And I'm really glad that, you know, that all of that paid off. And Steph, I can't thank you enough for your time today. This is absolutely sensational. And I can't wait to get this up. People are going to love it. Oh, no. Thank you, Jay, so much for having me. And I'm just really glad that one, you put on the conference every year because it's been fantastic and the speakers, not only in person, but um, you can watch it online. So that's fantastic. Buy into it. But hopefully next year I will be there. Oh, well, I think you'll like the new setup. Um, we had a couple things we had to work our way through this year, but moving forward, we're, we're pretty stoked about being at the Short Pump Marriott now. It's a little different being off campus. Beds are a little nicer. I'm sure Buddy yeah. would have much nicer things to say about the new <laughs> living arrangements that he said about the old rooms. We'll just leave it at that. But uh, no, seriously, Steph, I can't thank you enough. You're, you're killing it down there, dude. And I love seeing what you're doing. I'm so excited for what you guys are building down there. And I can't thank you enough for spending the time today. With, uh, it's sensational. Thank you so much for the time to catch no. up. Yeah, thank you, Jay, so much. Yeah, well, we'll be in touch real soon. Thank you. Bye. And a huge thanks to Mississippi State University's Director of Olympic Sports Strength and Conditioning, Stephanie Mock, for spending the time with us today. Just some open, honest, candid sharing. A coach who's really doing great things and really driving to lead not just young people as athletes, but develop and mold and matriculate a great staff as well. Stephanie, I love what you're doing down there. Keep up the great work. We're rooting for you hard up here in RVA. And guys, in all seriousness, make sure you give them a follow on Instagram at Hale State Strength. They are putting out awesome stuff. They're giving you a bird's eye view of everything that they're doing with their student athletes. I can't thank Stephanie and her staff enough for sharing all the great content and helping everybody else get better. It's truly appreciated. And as always, guys, if you did enjoy the talk, please share it through the social media outlet of your choice, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it may be. As always, we are just trying to get the best information out there to all the great coaches that we can. And as always, guys, thank you for everything that you do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We will be back next week with another awesome guest. We will see you then. <laughs>